My guest lives with a price on his head, but he never looks fearful or distressed. The former Baptist, former Pentecostal, now Anglican, Reverend Canon Dr. Andrew White, pastors a very unusual St. George's Church in Baghdad, where St. George's Clinic delivers humanitarian relief to their neighbors, regardless of religious or ethnic background. In meetings chaired by Canon White, the first ever joint Sunni Shia fatwa against violence in Iraq was produced read out loud uh, in at least 80% of the mosques throughout Iraq, as well as on several popular satellite television channels. This peacemaker has 35 bodyguards, last time I checked, but clearly God is keeping him and enabling him to bring the kingdom of God to troubled places on this earth. We are always eager to here from the vicar of Baghdad. He's here with a message I think we all need. Father, forgive. Reflections on peacemaking. Welcome, Canon White. Welcome to you as well. You have it's never looked so very regal. very nice to be back with you. You always look stunning and completely calm, but you come out of a war zone. Dare, dare I show the picture of... Yeah. An older book, yeah. Faith Under Fire. Now, sadly, I bent this one a little bit, but can, can you see this? This is a bulletproof vest, no doubt. Still 35 bodyguards? Oh, we've got plenty, yes. Yeah, but that doesn't make it safe ever, no. does it? No, no, no. This is your 11th book. Yes. Somehow you find enough calm to write, and uh, you have a message that really is for all of us. It's a message about one thing, love, mm. love. We say at the end of our service, al hub, al hub, al hub. We love, love, and love. Everything is about love. Our reconciliation work, our engagement with the terrorists, our dealings with the bad people, our provision of relief, of health care, all about love. Because my boss taught me to love my enemies. And your boss is? My boss is a carpenter <laughs> from Nazareth. Yes. And you have 500 Muslims in your congregation. Is that... No, 600. I, I was going to say that was last time I checked. Yeah, it's a 600 bit plus now. Growing. So who wants you dead? Oh, who lots of people. Who doesn't want love? Lots of people. Because so much of terrorism is about loss. So you find those who have lost and you find the people who are involved in terrorism. If you look at people like the Sunni minority now, they had power under Saddam. They have lost that power, their homes, their property. Ultimately, they have lost power. And that's where most of the terrorism comes from, the Sunni. Yes, not the Shia. and how do they show, try and show power nowadays? We oh. still have power, we can kill you. Yes, violence. Yeah. That's what so much of it is. You know, it's still quite... <laughs> I, I, I said before we came to air that um, y you are unusual and remarkable. Uh, you said odd. I would not use that word. But it's, it's difficult to grasp who you are and and what you're doing. Let, let me just back up. I used a lot of, did I get it all out there? Reverend Canon Doctor, uh, Cambridge University trained. You have a PhD. You are a medical doctor. You are a Hebrew scholar called to the Arab world. Uh, nothing about your life is... Normal. No. No. And, and God keeps bringing you through with a, a, a life circumstance and a ministry that that doesn't make sense. You have friends who are leaders from every faction. 
every community, every faction, politically and religiously, even amongst the bad people. Why did you write this book? This book lays out the whole workings of reconciliation. It's based on the Coventry Litany of Reconciliation. Now, what is that, the Coventry? Coventry Cathedral is where I really started my reconciliation work. And this is the leading reconciliation center in the world. The cathedral was bombed on the 14th of November, 1940. Are you talking about Coventry, England? Yes. I've seen it. I've seen the bombed out one yeah. and the new one. And... On the sanctuary wall, the dean wrote two words, Father, forgive. Yes. And people said, why have you not written Father, forgive them? He said, because we all need to be forgiven. Oh. It is not just them, it is us. And our God is waiting to forgive us. And so we can't separate ourselves from those who we might perceive as needing forgiveness, because we do as well. You say this is the, now you've said love, but in your book you cite forgiveness as really the, the power tool for reconciliation. Forgiveness is the means of restoring relationships, breaking down barriers, the glue to relationships. It's what keeps us together. You've had so many roles in bringing uh, difficult uh, relationships at, to a place of discussion. How do you get them to table? A very important thing is to allow them to hear the stories of each other. It was the American poet Richard Longfellow who said, who is my enemy? It is the person whose story I have not heard. So a very big part of our work is actually getting people to hear the story of the other. I can remember once I brought people together at a conference in Lebanon, and we had three days together, and I thought we'd spend the two days, first two days, listening to each other's story. We listened. Two days wasn't enough. Three days wasn't enough. We came back a few months later, and back, and back. It took two years to hear each other's story. A lot of patience needed. Patience. Huh. December 2012, Globe and Mail, The Quality of Mercy. And do, do you see the theme here? You can see it from a distance. How do, How do we, we forgive? forgive? And this is a, a bold proclamation that, you know, we all need this. We're not sitting down at tables with, with warring factions but in our homes, in our interpersonal relationships, our health is paying the price. And I always say the loving our enemy is not just loving our family, but mainly. <laughs> it can be the starting place, yeah. the biggest challenge. So what is the first barrier to cross, to break that gridlock, that stronghold, so that old stuff can be laid down and something new birthed. The words of the Shema Israel in Hebrew, Shema Israel Adonai Eleinu Adonai had, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is the only God, and you shall love him with all your heart and soul and mind. To know that God is real and his love is real. I can't allow you to leave without asking for your prayer. 
And you did something beautiful before we began this interview. Uh, you prayed in Aramaic, your carpenter. <laughs> Our carpenter prayed that in those words. Would you, I don't even know whether to pray for, for those struggling with forgiveness, but I'm just going to leave it to you, Pastor. We pray for all who need love, and we do the blessing in Aramaic. Mm. Lord God, our precious Holy Jesus, we love you, we adore you, and we ask you to come to us in this broken world, a world which needs healing. Bring restoration, bring healing, bring forgiveness, bring love. Shemid Baba, Brona, Brocha, Kosha, Ha'alaha. Amen. Amen. Ken White, thank you. I, I was reading what uh, Nikki Gumbel of Alpha Fame said about you, and I'm just going to seize the last line. He says, Not everyone is called to such a ministry, but Andrew acts as if he was born to it. And that's the only sense I can make of a most unusual call on a remarkable life. We need to be praying for your safety and hoping that you'll keep coming back. God bless you. I will. <laughs> and uh, don't miss this book, Father, Forgive.